Hello, hello. Right, let's start quickly today. Stories after. Hello, buongiorno. How are you? I hope you're well. It's cold today in New York City. I don't know why it looks like fall or even winter. So um, we go again um, today to Venice. Venice where Anne Maurier, the artist of the Invisible Dog, is confined for almost two months and so she sent us recipes, um, very typical from Venice. Uh, two days ago we made the fennel and today we made the bacalao and monte cao. So it's like fluffy, uh, creamy, um, salted codfish. So we have the codfish here, we soaked in the water overnight, bay leaf, um, uh, black pepper corn and milk and then while that is cooking we'll make a polenta. Okay, right, let's go. Start right now. I don't talk too much right now. So take the coats from the water, you cut in pieces. The fish is coming once again from Peerless Brooklyn. How beautiful is that? Up. And up. In the pot, like that. Okay. So why did you soak the cod? Uh, to um, unsalt it, because it's very, very salty. So you soak it in the water to unsalt it, to remove the salt, because if not, it's too strong. Bay leaf and peppercorn here, inside. You pour the milk on it. And on the stove for 10 minutes. Broil first, and then when it's broiling, slowly to simmer. Ah, voila, we started that, now we have more time. Steven is behind the camera as always. Hello Steven, how are you today? I'm mm, good. You're tired. good? You're yes. tired too? Yes. Yeah, I told you, it's cold today. And um, uh, if Anne is here in Venice, hello Anne, how are you? How is everything in Italy today? I hope good. And a little bit of cleaning. I know you like that. The cleaning. Most of the work of, uh, of Anne Mourier is focused on cleaning, taking care. So I know she appreciates when I clean like that. Let's look at that. So you remember if you were here um, on Tuesday, um, I mentioned that there are three reasons why I love Venice very much. The first one I said on Tuesday, it's when my parents moved to France to Egypt, well, moved back to France to Egypt. Um, they made a stop in Venice, they spent a few days in Venice and they called me from Venice. So I remember this phone call to my mom. The second reason why I love Venice and why I put this music behind, I'm going to tell you. Make sure. Get crazy. So the second reason is um, related to that. It's related to um, a trip, to journey. What we are listening today is a piece from uh, Frederick Handel, the um, British composer. He composed this piece at the beginning of the 18th century. You, we saw this piece together? No. No, no, no. no, 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 no. And, um, it was a different one. and he was 22. And he decided to go to Italy. It was his trip in Italy. And after his um, um, time he spent there, he wrote this absolutely incredible oratorio, uh, which is close from an opera. It's another form um, of opera. I made a stop. The milk now starts to boil. Make sure 
you stop it before, and if you don't want the milk to spill, just put a spoon inside, like that, and when it's boiling, you reduce the heat to simmer, and we are going to let that simmer for 10 minutes. Coming soon. Listen to the music. Can you hear the music? Remember, if you want to ask questions, Steven is behind the camera, he's reading your comments. There, is, there are questions already? And if you want no. to say hello and something... Okay, I'll healthy. pass it on. Huh? Yes. Voila. Up, slower. And again, with the spoon inside, no spill. What does the spoon do? The spoon um, uh, refrain the milk to spill. How? Science. Magical. Science magic? Yes. Uh, magic. Simon says hello. It's magic. Uh, maybe you remember that when um, in France, I remember my mom was putting a piece, a round piece of heavy glass on the bottom of the, of the, of the pot. What? Like that. And when the milk was um, uh, hot, um, the, the, the piece of glass was tack, 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 tack. you know that? No. The piece of glass was making a noise up, that was the sign, the, the milk was boiling and it never spilled because of that. So, back to the music. Handel, British composer, decided to make a trip to Italy. His first trip to Italy, it's the beginning of the 18th century, he's 22, and when he comes back, he's going to meet incredible people in Italy, and when he comes back, uh, he writes this amazing piece called Il Trionfo del Tempo e del Disogno, which we can translate, translate in English or in French by The Triumph of the Time, the Beauty, the, and the the pleasure and the disillusion. So what's the story of this piece? The story of this piece is the beauty and the pleasure are extravagant. They love to make fun and they, uh, they, they love to have fun and to party and, and really to enjoy life. But on the other side, there is the time and the disillusion and they are telling them, be careful, it won't last very long because you have the beauty now, and with this beauty you have pleasure, but at one point all of that will be over. And the beauty doesn't want to listen to that. It said, oh my god, you're so boring. Let me alone, leave me alone, and let me have fun. And of course, after a long time, the, 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 the after a moment where the time is always repeating that, you know, your beauty won't last always want that well. at one point uh, the beauty and the pleasure they realized that the time was right and when they realized that is the time of the disillusion and it's absolutely beautiful piece really i encourage you to listen to this piece and to read in the same time the lyrics of the piece it's a very it's not a very long piece maybe two uh, two hours um, it's not very difficult and you can find that if you google it you find all the translation in English, in French, um, and of course uh, the libretto in, in Italian. That was, uh, that was fast, no? I did all of that fast. So why, um, why um, I choose this piece? Because the second reason why I love Venice so much is because my trips in Venice. I, I've, I've been going to, going to Venice um, for the Biennale, the Art Biennale, for maybe, I don't know, 16 years, 14 years, if Gisela is here, she can confirm. And every time I'm traveling with Gisela, um, this uh, French uh, friend, a sweet Swedish French friend from Paris, very dear to me, and with my Christine and Jean also, who are a friend of mine who lives in Marseille, and others sometimes are joining us. Um, Stephen came um, last year, right? Yes. We went together last year. Um, and, uh, and it's a very, very special moment because 
you know, Venice is a city with so much tourists everywhere, but the moment of the Biennale of art um, in Venice is very special because first the, the Biennale is somewhere else in the city, it's like far from the touristic part, and for four days or five days, you only see art from the morning to the evening. And there's not so much to do in Venice at night. So you go to bed early, you have dinner early, and you wake up early to, to see the sunrise um, on Venice. So this is one of the reasons. Um, it's really linked about the trip, and every other year I plan my trip in advance. There's no way I can cancel that or change that. And I go to Venice with my friends, um, uh, and, uh, and there we meet other friends. And it's always, always, always a very, very, very nice moment. So that's the second reason why I love so much Venice. And I will tell you the third reason on Saturday for the other recipe um, we'll do. So this is boiling. It's time with almost 10 minutes. Do you want me to bring the camera over so they no, can see? No, not yet. So the 10 minutes are almost done now, so we are going to turn off the heat and just let it sit for 10 more minutes. And while we have 10 more minutes, we are going to make polenta. And the polenta is very easy. Um, polenta. You can use water. I like to use broth. This is a homemade broth I made. I think it's a vegetable broth. I made and a little bit of cream. So we stop that. I was watching at the, at the time, you see the time and the disillusion, and I was saying, wow, it's extremely long, but actually instead of putting 10 minutes, I put 10 hours. I was saying, why it's so long? You cover that here, and now you can come, Stephen. So to make your polenta, it's very simple. The water or the broth, you're going to uh, warm it. And when it's warm, very slowly, you're going to pour the polenta inside and work it, work it, work it until it gets a nice um, texture. You know the real polenta? Um, real, that's uh, Alexandra Perini um, who told me that. She runs an, an Italian grocery store in Paris. The real polenta is 45 minutes. You have to cook it for 45 minutes and stirring non-stop, 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 non-stop. A lot of work. Luckily now we have polenta, like instant polenta, and it goes much faster. Remember, the polenta very often we hear people saying, oh, but it's sad. No, because you can do a lot of things with polenta. You can add stuff in it. You can make it creamy or more dry. The polenta of my sister, Rosanna, for example, is one of my favorite. I absolutely, absolutely love it. It's full of cheese and, and, and it's crunchy. And every time I visit her, she lives in Nice, in the south of France. Every time I visit her, one of the first things I said, I said, can I have your polenta? And she said, yes, it's ready. The polenta is already in the oven. So that's perfect. So the broth is warming while the fish... You want to look at the fish here? Sure. Look at the fish. Oh, you see? The fish is in the... Just in the milk, like that. And it stays 10 more minutes. Just let it sit like that. Any questions? about Venice, about the music, no, nothing, not even the hello, nothing, nobody says hello to me. Simon did, but you ignored it, Vanessa. Simon said what, hello? Yes. Oh, hi, hello, Simon. How are you? Good. Okay, so this is ready. You lower the heat a little bit. Not too much, huh? we, we need to have heat to cook. And slowly, Little by little, you do that and you stir. Don't put the, the whole polenta. Just put a little bit like that and you stir. 
Doreen asked what we were listening to. Doreen asked, what, are you late, Doreen? Yeah, she was late. Yes, you were late. But let's just we are re <laughs> restate. Anything for you, Doreen. You know that. We are listening to an oratorio from Frederick Handel. He wrote in the 18th century called Il Triunfo del Tempo and del Delusio. No, de, del Tempo and del Designio. I will send you the link on your email if you want later. You're going to love that. More polenta. And you steer. And you can make the polenta more or less liquid or more or less solid. It depends the way you like it. You see now it's getting the the, the the polenta is getting thicker. You see, Steven, can you come closer? That means the polenta is cooking, and it takes really five minutes to make a polenta. It's very very easy. If the heat is too strong, lower it a little bit, but not too much. You really need to cook that. And I will show you after. There are many ways to, um, to serve the polenta. You can serve it as a mashed potato, or as we are going to do here, we're going to make a cake with it. Look like why it's hot. Just splattered on me. <laughs> more and you see slowly slowly why you do like slowly just because you don't want to put too much it's better to uh, and now we did that you just let it cook I like the consistency now now it's perfect. Remember, uh, when the polenta is getting cold, um, it gets uh, harder. So we want to have it a bit more liquid like that. And while it cooks, I'm going to add a little bit of heavy cream to make it more creamy. And for example, you can add herbs if you want. Voilà. Some salt and pepper, not so much salt as always. You know, I'm not a big fan of salt, though I don't like to put too much salt, but I like to put pepper. Even if I don't like spicy things, the pepper. You see, your polenta is ready. What? Why? Two fig, two fig is here. Two fig is here. Hi, two fig. Do you know two fig? Two fig is a fantastic artist. He lives in Montreal, and he's working a lot here at the Invisible Dog. We did many, many projects together. should go check his Instagram. It's very funny. He's doing hey girl. Hey girl. Hey girl. Hey girl. <laughs> he's, ma he's making a very fun, fun project during the confinement. He's making a video per day, a sh very short video per day. I forgot the name of this TikTok, 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 TikTok. And it's TikTok. really, really good. I love it. TikTok. Et voilà. The polenta is ready. You see? So do you want to add something in the polenta? Let's go. Let's add uh, Let's add a little bit of rosemary. A little bit, not too much. Just a little bit. 
And when the polenta is ready, or missed even, I had like more. You, you can go oh. put the. Mm -hmm. It will be easy. easier. Voilà. And now we put the polenta here. And when the polenta will be dry, uh, will be dry, will cool, sorry, it will become. Tufik says you should put Moroccan saffron in there. I can put what? Moroccan saffron. Moroccan saffron. I promise next time I'll do that. It's too late now. But yes, Tufik, uh, there is a tradition in Morocco. Is that tradition in Morocco? You offer saffron to people. And it's um, like a beautiful gift. And Tofik offered me recently an envelope with saffron when actually we opened this space here as a gift. Voila, the polenta is ready. You just let it sit on the side. And that's perfect. What's going on here? 10 minutes? Yes. Back to that, and we are going to use a machine today. Someone else said white truffles. White truffles in the polenta? I guess so. Yes. Yeah. Very good idea. Absolutely. Again, you can you can flavor the polenta with everything we want. Actually, the, the you know the Edition de l'Epure, this um, uh, French publisher I love so much, they made a special um, one, a special book called The Polenta and 10 Ways to Prepare It. Oh. Big boy. Yes. Do you have that? It's perfect. If you don't have that, don't worry, you can do that with your hands. You just need more of that. Of muscle, but if you're following the class, the Pilates class of my friend Florence, you have like nice muscles like that. Right. Okay, so the fish in the food processor. Like that. And what are we going to do is like, a, like almost like a mayo with that. A mayonnaise means we are going to mix two ingredients with different texture, the fish. You put a little bit of milk in it. Two spoons, two tablespoons, should be enough. Well, cleaning, 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 I know. And up you start your food processor to make a paste of that. Remember one thing, when you use your food processor, stop sometimes, because the blade creates heat. Uh, heat? Heat. Heat, yeah. yes. Like hot. And, and sometimes you don't want to heat more. So you just do that. Let's check. Oh, yes. Let's create the edge. So look, you should have that now. Something like that. Okay. Well, now let's add a little bit of milk again. One spoon and a half. And now, I don't know why my, my apron wants to leave today, doesn't want to stay with me. It's the plot, is Yeah, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's start. And slowly you're going to add olive oil. Can you see here? Will it come closer? And the olive oil, you add it slowly, slowly. 
again, like a mayo. And we are going to do that until it gets together. Check. You see, it gets like a little bit fluffy now. You can go more. fluffy now let's continue to add olive oil remember the olive oil is good for what you have whatever you have And Martin is watching us. She can confirm that. Look, mm -hmm. now it's really creamy. Now it really looks like a mayo. And that's perfect. We don't need more than that. Remember to not add uh, salt. It's very salty already. Okay, remove the machine. Plate. Present that later. Let's see. But you see, the result is absolutely perfect. It's nice, it's fluffy, it smells really, really good. Bacalao Montecao, the creamy cold fish, salted cold fish. So you have the bacalao here, you have the polenta here, and I don't know, you can put some on the top. Here it's not, it's not cold enough, so I cannot show you, you'll see on the picture later, but I cannot show you the result of that, but you will see. oh yes, you can see here, look. You see, it comes. It's oh, really like like yeah. a block. Okay. Yes, I don't want I don't want to unfold it right unfold right now. But you see, mm -hmm. it gets and it's very it's very quick. So we will have like a. Oh, <laughs> I did, that was dangerous, huh? To do, I put it back. But we'll have something like that. And then what you can do, for example, you can. If you have uh, one like that, um, you can cut it in small squares and add some um, of the bacalao on the top. Or you can have like also a bacalao with um, the polenta uh, on it, or the polenta and the bacalao on the top, whatever you want. Et voilà. That was the recipe of the day. Do you have any questions? No. No questions. No. So. Thank you very much. I remember, remind you, that was a recipe from Anne Mourier, this artist uh, from The Invisible Dog, who is confined in uh, Venice now, in Italy, for almost two months. Um, as I told um, her the first time, we miss you a lot. And um, I know you miss Brooklyn and you miss us very much. I hope so. That will be very soon. Next live will be Saturday. 
um, and we'll make um, um, shrimps with tomato sauce, um, another very, very, very Venetian recipe. Until then, this recipe will be on my stories for 24 hours, then on the YouTube channel forever. Um, bon appétit. Anything else I should say? No? Remember to go check the Instagram of my lover, Dogs I Have Painted. He's making something special for his birthday next week. He needs support. Thank you very much. Um, see you Saturday, 1 p.m. And in the meantime, listen to Frederick Handel, Il Triunfo del Tempo and del Designio. Ciao.